Hey guys, DM Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. This is going to be a pretty wild one. We're going to start out with the Karma Chameleon, Sting Chameleon. This actually isn't too bad. I feel like the game kind of front loads the more difficult of the bosses, and then things start to kind of slowly get easier. I'd say Sting Chameleon's kind of up there as like a middle of the road difficulty boss in terms of Mavericks, but. The stage itself and Sting Chameleon aren't too tough. One of the things that I think is interesting, which I haven't really been pointing out because I haven't really been showing it off, but this is something to take note in, is that the various stages that you do and the order that you do alters the way that the stage itself is displayed. So for instance, in this one, there's water in it now. Typically it's dry, but if uh, you beat Launch Octopus first, which is kind of the canon order of defeating the bosses, it'll put some water in the stage. So if you jump over that pit and hop up here along the wall, you can fight yourself a nice mini boss. This fight kind of sucks. And I don't mean that because it's difficult. It's very monotonous and boring. I'm trying my best to show off what capabilities this thing has. It's got just a little claw shot and hops around. That's, that's it. And the only thing that you can do in terms of hitbox is its head. You can't shoot its claws, you can't shoot its feet. So let's just play around here a little bit and switch up with the weapons. I'm actually trying to get better about that and using some of the weapons because when I would typically play these games, you know, you get the boss weapon every time that you beat one of the Mavericks and then you sometimes you never use it. There isn't really much utility to them. I know that in future Mega Mans in the X series that they actually do have moves that are pretty useful in terms of like being able to grapple or create a platform for yourself, stuff like that, or to give yourself a boost. So I'm just kind of experimenting here and seeing what works. I never realized how much utility these do have in terms of like taking out certain enemies to make yourself more effective through this stage. I always would think it would be funny when I was a kid and be like, why am I struggling so much? I would just try to brute force it. So obviously that's not the way to go. That's not gonna win you a Mega Man game. Use all the tools at your disposal. They might not seem like it on the surface, especially in their first phase form. And I'll explain what that means. Probably not in this episode, but in the future, because we're not quite there yet. But these weapons have more utility than they do presently. So once our robot friend here starts smoking, that's when you know that you're getting kind of near the end of this fight. It would help if I wouldn't miss on my shots, the limited ones that I'm taking. I have no idea why I decided to switch back to the X Buster. It's not any stronger, so it is what it is. But he blows up. Let's jump in his aftermath and have a very intrusive capsule pop up. Now, I know I said early in playing this game that the leg boost that you get from that capsule is the best one. I'm a little conflicted because it's the one that has the most utility. However, this one might be the best one in terms of pure usefulness for the game. The new set of armor that you get from this, as you could read the caption, says that it reduces damage by 50%, which is huge, especially if you're a ding dong like me and you don't really avoid hits like I should. So we're gonna take a little bit of a risk here and we're gonna jump down this pit. That's not typically recommended, but if you do go down here, it unlocks a little area that can be broken with the boots. I think you might have to have the leg booster first in order to get that, but we'll nab ourselves a heart piece, which is nice, expanding our health a little bit more. Pretty good. We're gonna get stuck here for a bit, that's fun. Mega Man is all about taking risks and getting stuck in inopportune places that most people probably wouldn't. So we've got these Robo Rock guys. This part of the phase, phase of this stage is actually a little more difficult if you don't take out that robot first. And I think the, I guess the logic behind it is that he's supposed to be up there stomping around. And so what that does is it causes parts of the stage to come down around you. So instead of just having the little rock guys here that throw parts of their cells at you. There's a bunch of little cubes of rock that'll come down, raining on your head. So here's our first exposure to, in this phase at least, of this stage, uh, to birds not being real. This is These are the government drones that have been put in Mega Man to try to put microchips in our blood. 
So you gotta watch out for that. As I play this game more, I'm starting to become more comfortable with what I'm supposed to be doing. I try not to pre-play, just so that way my reactions are authentic and the things that I'm doing are, you know, less rehearsed, but I, I my current setup has me doing post-commentary for this, if you couldn't already tell. And just, you know, a couple run-throughs of the basic stuff is to help me get used to it. Now, something I could never get used to is fighting with these mech suits. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, I don't want to get used to it because of how fun this is. You know, it's like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, Transformers even, Gundams. Getting in big robo fights. I think it's kind of weird, though, that you have, like, Mega Man, who is a robot, piloting another robot. It's like Robotception. It's kind of meta, I guess, if you want to look at it like that. Pretty neat. But yeah, this this stage wasn't really that bad. It wasn't any different. I mean, I guess if you don't take out Launch Octopus and then if you don't go with the mini boss, it's a little tough, but not really. So here's Stink Chameleon. Of the bosses, he's not too bad. I really like his design. I think it's cool. His weakness is Boomer Quanger's Boomerang, which is a really cool weapon in that it acts exactly like it's supposed to. It's a boomerang and that boomerang when you shoot it, if you miss, it comes right back and it doesn't drain from your weapon power bar, which is nice. So Stinky Million is going to hang on to the ceiling. He's going to use his invisibility. He's going to stick out his nasty tongue and rain down some spikes from the ceiling. Overall, this fight's really cool. I remember this one giving me trouble as a kid, but then again, what didn't? You know, that's kind of probably like a very redundant thing to say. Very obvious, like, yeah. This gave you trouble as a kid. Everything gave me trouble as a kid. But that's it. Things are getting a little bit easier. I am being less of a goofus as I play, which is nice. And that's uh, that's that's another vi victory over a Maverick. How about that? Sting Chameleon's power in its first form is not anything remarkable. It's just a spread shot. But the upgraded form of his power-up, which all of them do have, as I was alluding to before, we won't see that in this episode, we'll see that in the next episode. But uh, yeah, the upgraded form is actually pretty good. So our next Maverick of the day, we're going to do two today, we're making a ton of progress actually. It's going to be Storm Eagle, so this episode is basically a an homage to birds not being real. So let's go we'll take on the head bird that is not real, himself, itself, Storm Eagle. This phase... I don't know I keep saying face. This stage is actually really fun and it's very easy. Has one of the best soundtracks in the game, so I'll shut my mouth for a moment. I was on YouTube uploading one video in the past and I clicked on some sort of like metal cover of this. Obviously, like this is a game that kind of has like that video game metal flair to it. And it's been showing me non-stop versions of this song and various others, which I like, but I get it. But if you jump off the top of the conveyor belt, take a leap of faith all the way to the left to get yourself another heart piece, which is really nice. I also, for some reason, became very enamored with this specific spot. Someone's calling for their dad. Da 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 da. You can blow that up with your X Buster, you don't need to have a fiery weapon, which we don't quite have yet. We might. We might have a fire weapon soon. This is where I start to get a little more creative in using the different powers. There's two tiers of this for some reason, and I decided to go to both of them. This is pointless, but whatever. You can shoot it with your X Buster as, per, as you know, per use yourself some health, which is Redundant after I take damage, so that was kind of stupid, but whatever. But you can see now what sort of a benefit we get from that chest piece upgrade. Like the 50% damage is absolutely huge. I know that these kind of grabber guys aren't doing a ton, but you know, spending our time in the 1001st airport could be very harrowing, and so having some extra defense never hurts. The way that it, it looks, I'm not sure if Mega Man has always had those shoulder pads, but it kind of makes me think to like, I'm sure 
people have seen Dragon Ball Z at some point in their life. During the Frieza saga where they wound up getting the upgraded armor that gave them most of them shoulder pads, which I think was kind of funny. So I guess the lesson learned in life is that when in doubt, shoulder pad it out. Now, the homing missiles for this part of the game are super, super useful. You don't really need them to do what I'm about to do, but if you climb up in this area, you can get yourself an energy tank. If you fill that up with bonus weapon energy when your health is full, it will fill up, and you can use that as a reserve for when things are getting a little dicey. Now, one of the things that kind of sucks about the homing missiles is that if the sprite that you're shooting at does not stay on screen the entire duration of you destroying it, it will reset. So it doesn't really count. You'll see that I already messed up once that and here again when you jump onto it if you don't kill it while it's on screen that it's not going to count all the way you're going to have to do it again so you're going to wind up taking damage anyway it kind of sucks but whatever so we've got another one of these explodey areas i i was convinced that this was something more impactful than it really is it's not so that's you know I guess I'm just so persistent that I just wanted to uh, stick with it, waste some of the boss weakness, and then I just give up. It just wasn't worth it. Sometimes in life, you just got to give up. I don't even know what's in there. It's probably a life. I think that's what it is, so it's not special. But this is the fourth of the four fire blockade things. This isn't required either, technically, but it does give you our second power-up of the day. So you're welcome, everybody. This is the helmet enhancement, which for all intents and purposes is very... it's pointless. I I think that there is one other spot besides this that you use it in, in another stage to get a weapon power-up. Mega Man gets a little nice golden tiara. You can break through these bricks, which are only in the game, I think, one other time. So you can do that if you want. It is kind of pointless, and I don't know. I mean, it looks cool. It's more of an aesthetic, I suppose, but the practicality of that upgrade is not really there. So whatever. Enjoy yourself. If you like, you know, situational stuff, then that's for you. It actually does unlock the final upgrade that we're going to be getting, not today, but an upgrade that is super useful and makes the game easier. And it's something that I've been talking about already, so I'll, I'll hush up about it. I don't want to spoil too much. I'll leave something to the imagination. So back to the stage, we've got these floating platforms which will drop out from underneath you, and then you have to destroy these cannons. So we're going to fight fire with fire. They're shooting missiles. I'm shooting missiles. It just seemed fair. We're gonna return fire and then that's it like these two stages are very brief and it just makes me think of how you've got stages like spark mandrel armored armadillo launch octopus those stages are pretty long and pretty tough based on the way that they're structured and kind of like the mini bosses and stuff that are associated with them and then you have these two and i don't know I don't want to say that I cheesed them or anything, but these just seem overall easier than the others. So if you couldn't have already guessed, Storm Eagle is very weak to Chameleon Sting. He's in a dive bomb left and right across the stage. And if you shoot him in the midst of doing that without getting hit, which I'm not doing a good job at, takes him out a little bit. This fight in particular kind of makes me think of like the Eagle's Tower fight from Link's Awakening when you've got the Eagle itself diving back and forth. But that's it. We'll watch him explode in our face. Get one of the coolest weapons in return after we suck his life force away. Mega Man's very excited about that. Just committing homicide. He's a pretty cool guy. And we get this storm tornado. Turn a nice kind of cool pinky purple color. And that's actually a weapon that's good for taking out a bunch of enemies. Causes a lot of frame rate issues too. So there's my code if you want it, if you're interested. But uh, yeah, that's two enemies, a bunch of power-ups. That's all for me today, guys. I've been D-Mike. Thanks for watching Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll see you next time. Bye!